I'm now close to the Platinum Trophy in Horizon Forbidden West. I played almost 60 hours and there are some mistakes I wish I did not make that in retrospect were kind of a waste of time. So want to share multiple of them in this video. The big one really is is that I spent a lot of time upgrading purple weapons only to replace them by a legendary item a little later on. The best example is my Death Rattle Warrior Bow. I love these smaller bows, as you might know, so I thought, let's upgrade it at the workbench. Of course, create a job with triangle, and then you'll see the location for the machine you have to kill. Very often you need special parts, which requires you to take out the machine a couple of times before you get it, or you have to play a certain way to get the loot. Totally use the focus, of course, to scan the machine before you engage, and then you will see the parts you need highlighted with a special quest icon. I only really started focusing on this later on. On, but don't make the same mistake start creating jobs for every item or upgrade that you want because then these quests will just be active in the background and then every time you encounter a machine you will see if you need a part for an upgrade or to buy something at the shop so you totally get more out of each hunt also take the parts so they are more easily highlighted when fighting the machine and easier to spot when they are laying on the ground so yeah in short upgrading items at the workbench it is a fun grind especially because of the amount of machines the game has but it does take a lot of time so just make sure that the item you're upgrading will not be easily replaced later on. Because a little later I discovered the Karja's Bane Legendary Warrior Bow, which is almost the exact same as the Dead Rada Warrior Bow I spent upgrading, only way better. Even on level 1, the stats on this legendary version are better versus an almost upgraded Purple Warrior Bow, and this is the case for many other weapons if we compare similar types in rarity and put them next to each other. The higher the rarity, the more mod slots and perks these weapons have as well so basically the time i spent upgrading that purple variant was for nothing now sure getting these legendary weapons is a bit harder than the purple variants although in the case of the Karja's bane you just have to complete all the races starting over here on the map which doesn't take that long so the big tip would be is to use purple weapons maybe upgrade them once if you got the materials anyways but stop there because it's not worth your time high chance there's a better legendary variant so you will not end up using this weapon anyways every weapon type namely has one legendary variant apart from the hunter's bow which has two we went over them in another video which i will link to at the end of this one there are totally exceptions though like the renegade warrior bow for example has frost arrows which we cannot find on the legendary warrior bow so that makes this one worth upgrading if you like to use frost arrows with a warrior bow so yeah don't make the same mistake and waste time upgrading purple weapons i never touched blue upgrades either only green items are worth enhancing at the workbench before reaching the end game the increases are namely super noticeable and the materials required are very easy to get just save the real grind for the best weapons in the game it works a bit different for the armors though so let's go over that and more mistakes you don't want to make a like on the video would of course really help me out and subscribe for way more spoiler free horizon videos like this so first things first it's still not worth it to spend time upgrading blue or purple armor before finishing the main story and a lot of the side content because high chance is that you find something better although at one point after for example getting a legendary armor it is worth it to check on a lower rarity armors because by upgrading these outfits you unlock their mod slots with special mods you can then put on any other armor piece so even if you don't like the regular regular skills on one outfit if it has a very good mod for a different build you are trying then it will still be nice to upgrade this armor to get that mod and then put it on the outfit you do like it's a very cool system and i totally think that this will be one of the main end game grinds and i'm looking forward to it now another mistake you can easily make is wasting valuable resources on ammo you can better save for the bigger machines. The spike thrower is of course amazing but it does cost some special ammo that you have to buy so it's quite expensive to use it on easy to kill machines so you can better save it for the tougher fights. Higher rarity weapons also have advanced ammo and to craft this you need volatile sludge which can be hard to come by especially early on as it can be a drop from apex machines 
or bigger ones like a Tremor Tusk. So it's not smart to waste that ammo on enemies you can also kill easily with, for example, a regular Hunter Bow because the regular arrow from the Hunter Bow only costs some metal shards and rich woods, which you can, of course, find everywhere. That's why I also loved the Warrior Bow because the regular arrows from this Warrior Bow are also very cheap to make. So just keep that in mind and look at the crafting requirements before using particular ammo. My favorite shop in the game sadly doesn't sell ammo or tools but it's still worth keeping an eye on this one it's over here on the map next to your base if you namely check this person's inventory often you will see that it gets refilled over time likely based on your main game progression so the first time i went here he was selling just two blue weapons but then later on in the game after doing some main quests the same person was selling way more blue weapons but also some very rare and now after having finished the story, it's only purple in the selection, also for armor sets. So while the shops in the settlements have a set inventory that doesn't change, and I think other like vendors in the world as well, this guy over here next to your base totally restocks and sells better items. So check him out often. But there are also some special weapons and armors hidden in chests that you can miss if you don't pay attention. During the Dying Lands main mission, for example, you find a special utaru outfit in the chest and a bit easier to miss is the special bull blaster before starting the sea of the sands main quest don't immediately climb up but check under the floor to find a chest there with the first variant of this weapon you will likely find but also optional locations like rebel camps can have free weapons and outfits i already touched on the karja blazon outfit you can find in my previous video which i will link to in the pinned comment and there's also a piercing sharpshot bow you can find in the hive rebel camp over here on the map so totally nice to check that out when you're still early because this weapon will become useless when you find it later on like me when i was just clearing everything on the map so totally play the game how you want of course but what you will notice is if you do a lot of side content before touching most of the main quest that there are a ton of activities you cannot do yet because you're missing specific tools so totally when you notice that you cannot interact with many of the things in the world or cannot dive for a long time just pick up the main quest and then you will find the tools you need but yeah there is one weapon or armor you can miss entirely depending on a choice you make so i will still keep it very vague but spoiler warning still for forbidden west and of course, if you're leaving, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and check out the best weapons video if it's already up by clicking on the screen. Okay, you're still here. So during the Wings of the Ten main mission, you see different rewards, but you can only get one of two depending on a choice you make during a Vist, Heart or Brain dialogue. If you choose the Brain, you still have to pick the other options. If you go for the Heart here, you get the Tanakh High Martial Armor, which is not good. And there are other armors in the game that look just like it, including the Tanakh Skirmisher we talked about in my Early Things You Wanna Get video. So yeah, this armor is not good. But if you choose the Fist option, they get a Sharpshot Bow, which is actually pretty good and better than other purple similar Sharpshot Bows I could buy at that shop I talked about near the base. It also has way more interesting perks. So yeah, compared to the armor, it's amazing to get the bow instead. So personally, I would pick the Fist option, but yeah, it's of course up to you when you get there. Subscribe for way more content like this. A like on the video would be awesome. And if the best weapons video is already up, they will see it on the screen right now. I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.